So as mentioned, I'm an infectious disease doctor, and so I take care of patients and I try to diagnose them early. Um, so I can treat them early and reduce the burden of their disease, but that doesn't make my job any different from the oncologist or the cardiologist who wants an early diagnosis to be able to treat a patient, or for any of us who've been patients and we want the diagnosis early to get on with treatment and do well. But the other part of my job is to prevent infections, and so that part of my job relies on early diagnosis to stop transmission, to isolate patients and prevent transmission from going forward. So I'm going to talk about a very specific infection, Clostridium difficile. You heard a little bit about it in the microbiome talk. But if C. diff is not your bug of choice, if you like MRSA or VRE or resistant gram negative, just think of that because everything I'm going to say is for the most part transferable to those other pathogens. This is a hospital. Might look familiar to some of you, but just imagine the last hospital you walked into. Our team has been leveraging the EHR data to make a hospital look like this. This is what we think of the hospital. We take every bit of data that's structured in the electronic health record, we extract it. This includes where patients go, who their providers are, every diagnosis, every lab test, every microbiology test. And we map them because with communicable diseases, it's not just me getting diagnosed with C. diff that matters for early diagnosis and treatment. It's me getting diagnosed, getting isolated, so I don't transmit that infection to others in the hospital. If we zoom in, these are complicated connections. Each of these dots is a patient, whether we have diagnosed them or not with C. diff or your MDRO or your VRE. And these are connections between the patients, shared spaces, shared procedures, shared providers. And for diseases that are, get transmitted through the environment, through the hands of healthcare workers, understanding these connections, these edges, is so critically important because if we break those edges, we can stop transmission and stop disease. So C. diff, I'm gonna focus it on one um, HAI, so a hospital-acquired condition. 500,000 infections a year, 30,000 deaths. It's the gift that keeps to giving because if you get it, you're 25% likelihood of getting it again and recurrent C. diff is very difficult to treat. Here's the healthcare provider, and if she washed her hands, which she's supposed to do, she could still transmit C. diff, because there could be C. diff on the bed railing that she's touching right now. And then she shakes the patient's hand, the patient ingests the C. diff, and can go on to have disease. Five billion in healthcare costs each year, but those are acute care hospital costs. That's to say nothing of what's going outside of the healthcare, uh, of the acute care hospital in nursing homes and outside of that. About $30,000 for the most severe cases. So when C. diff is identified, so if I diagnose a patient with C. diff, um, I'm going to treat them. And if I treat them early, I can reduce the risk of them developing severe disease and going on to die. But when I also identify them early, I isolate them, I institute specific infection control strategies, and I can prevent the spread to other patients. Despite a lot of effort ongoing across the country and really across the world, we are not getting a handle on C. diff. The incidence continues to grow, um, and it is, it is a huge problem for hospitals and a huge cost to hospitals. The risk of you getting a C. diff infection when you're admitted to the hospital or even when you're out seeing your doctor in, in a clinic is multifactorial. There are patient risk factors. Did I get this antibiotic or not? How many days of antibiotics have I gotten? Those are really inherent to the patient. And as a doctor, I can think of a few of them, but I can't think of all of them. But the exposure part, I absolutely can't conceive of. I can't think about all those nodes and all those connections. And really, we need to find these people. Who are these people? Who's spreading disease? What we've been able to do is take every single patient that's in the hospital today, and rank them according to increasing risk. So we can focus our interventions on the highest risk patients. So the traditional approach, you look at a small set of risk factors. Did they get an antibiotic or not? These are things that are published in the literature, but it, we're agnostic to that when we look at machine learning approaches. We develop a single prediction at one point. When you're admitted, what's your risk of C. diff? That doesn't make sense because lots of things happen in the hospital. You move all over the hospital. You have providers moving through the hospital and interacting with you. And it's one model that's supposed to work across every single hospital. The physical layouts of hospitals are different. The testing strategies are different. Why would we think that that would work well? It doesn't. So we're agnostic to those risk factors. We take everything out of the EHR and we let the model help us figure it out. We make multiple predictions every single day of a hospitalization, every single day. And we develop hospital-specific models. Here's an example of what we've done at, the, at MGH and the University of Michigan, over 250,000 admissions 
3,000 cases of C. diff, we made daily predictions, considering all the changes that happen over time, achieved an AUROC of 0.82, but here's the game changer. We found these patients at least five days before the doctor figured it out. Five days, five days is huge when you're trying to prevent transmissions from being, um, go through in the hospital. So let's take a look at this. The dark line in the middle here is when the doctor di diagnoses C. diff. If we are able to move this back a day, two days, five days, what we do is not only diagnose patients earlier and give them better treatments, earlier treatments, but we prevent that patient from becoming a source for more infections in the hospital. So we, we, make, we achieve earlier diagnosis, we get better treatment, but we also isolate these patients and prevent them from transmitting to other patients. We actually could bend this curve, reducing the severity of disease, lower the curve, because we'll have fewer patients actually developing C. diff. So hospitals could absolutely use this tool to identify these at-risk patients, test them, and isolate them early. This could decrease length of stay. These patients stay on average four days longer in the hospital than a patient who is not diagnosed with C. diff, decrease transmission, and obviously reduce the cost through less, less severe disease, but also fewer cases. For vaccine drug manufacturers interested in this market, finding C. diff in the hospital could be like a needle in a haystack because the incidence overall among all hospitalized patients is quite low. But if you target your population because you have a risk prediction model that's finding these patients earlier in the course of admission, you could potentially leverage that to increase subject recruitment and decrease your costs. And for EHR vendors who really want to take it to the next level, enhance a product for a premium, this is really a tool for you. So this is generalizable and it's scalable, but it's completely customized. There are 5,000 hospitals in this country. There are 15,000 skilled nursing facilities. They're all different. They all need a different model. This is a big market for therapeutics, estimated at 1.4 billion. And right now, the EHRs are starting to help us report infections. Wouldn't it be better if they were preventing infections and we were reporting those less? So our next step is a prospective randomized controlled trial. Our database for MGH goes from every single admission since the year 2010 up until March 31st of this year. We will be in the next uh, few months getting daily data extracts from the electronic record for MGH, and we're gonna act on those results, diagnose patients earlier, and isolate them earlier. But we're moving beyond C. diff, focusing on MRSA, VRE, and multi-drug resistant organisms. If you don't believe me that they're out here, you might believe the Wall Street Journal that seems to believe the CDC that just reported in the last two weeks that some of these organisms we thought were rare are not in fact rare, they're actually much more common. So if I leave you with something, it's when you walk into your hospital of choice, don't think of it about a bunch of buildings. When you see doctors moving around and patients moving down the hall on stretchers, think of these nodes, think of these connections, and think of all the possibilities from early prediction and preventing infection. I'm gonna highlight our team, so MGH, um, infectious disease, hospital epidemiology, informatics, MIT at the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, and Michigan, where we've been doing this work for the past two and a half years. Thank you.